Hi, so we're back because I found a recipe that I really, really wanted to try. Um, trolling through various recipes on, on the internet and I saw this sort of pizza bomb type milk brioche bun stuffed with mozzarella and what's that stuff? Pepperoni they put in, on their pizzas. So I did a trial run yesterday um, and I did it with bacon, olives, uh, I didn't have mozzarella so I used cheddar and I used feta. Oh my god, they were delicious. Um, I made a rich tomato sauce to go with it and to dunk them in. And you slather uh, garlic butter with parmesan all over the top. So I've got a friend who's just had surgery, so I reckon this is quite a nice thing for her to, to have um, while she's lying in bed feeling desperately sorry for herself. So I'm going to try something new with this. Instead of basting it liberally with garlic butter on the outside, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to use mozzarella, ham, I'm going to dry fry these fresh mushrooms with thyme uh, so that the mixture is not too wet. But then I'm going to make, uh, I've got garlic butter on the go here. So I've got parsley, fresh, lots of fresh garlic, um, and I've got some sumac because I don't want to put lemon juice in, but I want that sort of lemony flavor that goes so well with mushrooms and butter. Once I've made that, I'm going to put that in the fridge to get hard, and I'm going to put hard butter with the rest of the ingredients inside, so that once it's baked, you're going to have this oozing garlic butter, and we'll also put some more on the top as well, and then a tomato sauce to go with it. So I can't explain to you how delicious these are. I mean, if you don't like them, then we're just not friends anymore, because really, the, these are banging. So, um, because I'm still... Uh, without a scale, I've converted this for my, for my ease, but the, the actual recipe will have the normal amount. So I've got 540 grams of flour, which is three cups plus a quarter cup plus two tablespoons. And I've got one and a half teaspoons of salt in here. I've got tepid milk, 310 mils, and one sachet of instant yeast, and one, I've put half a tablespoon of butter, I mean, sorry, sugar. And I'm going to let this bloom. And this will take about five minutes or so. And then I've got two eggs, which I'm going to give a quick whisk because that is going to be added to the bloomed yeast. There you go. We'll wait for this to bloom and come back. So we've got the mushrooms on the go, dry frying, because I want this all to be cold by the time you know, I'm ready to fill it, which will be well over an hour because uh, the dough has got to rise. But I'm just getting it on now, so while I'm waiting for the yeast to bloom. Right, so that's the garlic butter. Now I'm just going to roll it into a roll and then chuck it in the fridge. And this is blooming nicely. Looks a bit sort of dirty because of the sumac. So we've got sumac, a little bit of salt and pepper, um, fresh parsley, fresh garlic, and then of course the sumac. I'm not going to be too fussy about the shape of this because I want this to get hard and I'm going to cut it up. In fact, I don't want them to be too fat. And then get this nice and cold so that it doesn't melt before the sort of, while well, it, it's proving anyway. Just today, 27 degrees outside, middle of winter in Cape Town because we've got a berg wind. So that means that rain is on the way. So it's bloody hot outside and we had an incredible walk on the mountain today I mean we really are blessed to have these beautiful mountains and forests and everything else when the tourists come we must come back to Cape Town 
We've just gone to advanced level three, which means that we can go and eat in restaurants, we can go to the theater, we can go to the cinema, but we can't visit our friends or family. I mean, for God's sake, anyway. We will get through this, no doubt, by eating ourselves to a standstill. Right, so this is now, the moisture is gone, which is what I wanted. And it doesn't have to be overly cooked. And I haven't added any garlic to this because of the garlic butter that's going to go in it. I've just got fresh thyme and a little bit of salt and pepper, that's all. So, we're going to leave this now to cool. Chuck this in the fridge in a second. This has bloomed beautifully. Have a look. So now you can see that your yeast is going to work for you. And we want a whole packet of yeast in this because we're doing an enriched dough. So the, it's, it's a milk-based dough and it's got eggs in it. So it's a rich and it's going to have butter in it as well. So it is a rich dough, which means it's going to need a little bit more work to rise. But let me tell you, this is just beyond worth it. Okay, so the eggs go in. Use this to scrape the last of the egg out. Give this a little whisk. And then this is now going to go into um, the flour and salt. So the method this woman used is when I watched the video, is different from the way the, the recipe is written. In the video, she makes this dough, and then she, almost like making puff pastry, she uses the, the butter on top of the pastry, or on top of the dough, but then she works it in, she doesn't fold it in like you would puff pastry. So it's hell of a messy, but on the recipe which I'll post, which is the written version, it's incorporated with this. So anyway, I tried her method, and it is bloody messy, but it, it, it works really well, so why not? I mean, you can do it the way it's written over there. So this now is going to be kneaded, but it's hell of a messy, because it is a very sticky dough, because it is a brioche type dough. And do not panic, it will all come together. Try and use as little flour as possible when you make this. The temptation is to keep flouring it because it's so sticky. No, don't do that. Trust the process. This is chemistry. It, the, the flour will continually absorb uh, the liquid and the, and, the, and the little bit of fat from the egg yolks. And uh, it will all come together. It's, it's, it, it does take a while, but it's just one of those things, it's a labor of love that you have to do. So here we go, we start. So you won't be watching all of this, but I just want you to see some of the processes. I mean, if you look at this, you think, oh my God, this is wrong. It's not wrong. So you'll see as it comes together, and you can see I've got no flour that I'm going to add to this. But I'll keep going, and I'll let you know how long it takes and you'll see it start coming together. So I've been going two minutes, but if you've got a dough hook, obviously it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So you can do this with a dough hook. But I don't mind doing this, for me it's therapy. So five minutes down, and I did put the tiniest sprinkling of flour because every flower is their flower absorption is different. And this is a new batch of flour which is a different absorption to what I did yesterday. So I know the kind of texture that I need, uh, excuse the pun, um, from yesterday. So it's still sticky. Um, but I'm just going to give it a little bit longer because I've still got to add the butter and that's going to make it very tacky again. So I'm going to add a little touch of flour because I've had my butter softening in water and that's going to make it a little bit wetter, which I don't want. 
So I'm just going to incorporate that. Get my hands a little dry, pat dry. And then it's going to have a little bit of flour on the side here because this is now going to have a little bit of more water added from the bath that I soaked the butter in. So this is the messy bit, so your dough hook here would stand you in great stead. I know a lot of people will go, oh my god, no, this is way too much effort. But it's not. I'm using my offset spatula as a dough scrape, that was mine still in storage. So I think there's also a slight difference today because of the heat. So that's quite an interesting thing because this is actually behaving quite differently from yesterday. It's just taking a little bit longer than it did yesterday. Now I'm not starting to come together a bit. See it's very shaggy now and you can see these long strands which is the gluten starting to work and it's going to take longer in this because this is cake flour or all-purpose flour it's not bread flour and bread flour has got stronger gluten so you'll get that gluten working a lot faster than you will with uh, cake flour but you can see the yellowness of this dough which is usually an indication that it's an, uh, an enriched dough so this is better, now it's coming together. So it's actually not that long, I've been doing this for about five minutes really. So you can see patience is one out, I haven't even needed to touch that little pile of flour that I put there. And it's now starting to be beautiful and soft and smooth and elastic. Um, it also makes a little crackling sound when you do this. Which is interesting, it's like, I don't know, the yeast has started working, so it's like almost air bubbles, like cracking your knees when you stand up or bubble wrap, you know. So this is now feeling grand. So now, I still want it to be tacky and wet like this. I'm just going to put it into um, the same thing with a little bit of oil. Um, so that it, it keeps it sort of nice and doesn't form a skin around it. There's just a spot. And then we want this to double. Just coat it in this little bit of oil. Okay, so you can see the size of it now. You can't because the camera's disappeared. But there, and now you'll see what it looks like when it rises, when it doubles. So now you leave this alone. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some chicken and vegetable soup for my invalid friend. And then this should hopefully have risen. I was going to make a little tomato sauce to go with these pizza bombs. I've got some olive oil in there, just some normal... Uh, tin tomato and then I'm just going to add some dried chilies um, some oregano salt and pepper and then let it cook down and then this for me kind of makes it because in the video she doesn't do this but if you're going to have this bread and yes it's got it's, it's sort of garlic bread pizza bread but it just to dip it in that is heaven I'm going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar in there as well it kind of cuts the acid um, gives it a slightly different dimension which is an, sort of ironic because it is an acid but it's Sort of gives a sweetness to it that is really good. 
So I'm just going to let this cook down, and then I'm going to blend it so that there's no chunks in it when you dip your bread in it. And then the chicken minestrone soup, I'm making a chicken minestrone soup, um, is, is bubbling away in the background there. So I made a, some butter. Um, I used to make butter in England all the time because it's really nice thick cream. Um, I bought this lovely farm cream this morning. I had two of these. So this is the kind of buttermilk that's left behind, which I'll use for baking. And then that's the butter that I made in the uh, food processor. So it's, it's still, you've got to get rid of the moisture in, in here because it holds quite a bit of moisture. And I've added a little bit of salt. And um, it's still very soft because obviously the friction uh, heats it up. And then I'm going to use this to make some garlic butter to baste on the top as well. So yeah, there we go. I have sprayed a 12 hole muffin tin really well and I'm going to use this to put my little things in. And here we have the dough. It could rise a bit more, but I'm being a little bit impatient because I've got to go and deliver this this afternoon. But I'm going to give it another rise so it will be fine. It is beautifully soft. So I'm going to cut this into 12 pieces. It won't be exactly even, but um, it will be fine. Right, so this is the fun bit. Just going to do this. And then we're going to get some mozzarella. A little bit of ham. And some mushrooms. And the garlic butter, which I have forgotten in the fridge. Right, so now this is the experimental part. We are going to put some of this cold butter, garlic butter, into the middle. Let me just get a small knife. about that much and then we're going to close this up close it really well because you don't want any of this to seep out now and there you've got your little ball and then you put that on the, the joint on the bottom and then you just pop it into your tin to have another rise. So I've decided to use my intelligence and put the butter on the bottom. Not the way I did it the first time. It's like making dumplings. And I'm just going to brush them with a bit of milk, um, which while they rise will stop them from getting a sort of skin on them, help them rise more easily. You can see my the sizes are not exact, but it does really won't matter. So this will be about half an hour um, and then 
we can put them into the oven at 180 for about 25 minutes and then you've got yourself an orgasmo ball so here are these babies they've risen beautifully they are now going to go into the oven for 25 minutes at 180 and then when they come out we're going to brush them with I, I'm not using my homemade butter because there's loads of this butter left so I've got the butter the garlic and all that stuff that was in here and I've added um, parmesan so this is what we're going to brush it with afterwards and then here is the gorgeous tomato sauce which I haven't even needed to blend because I've cooked it down and it's just so soft and concentrated and delicious okay so that's what we'll be dipping with we'll, of course we'll have to taste it for you to see right so this is going into the oven okay so my little experiment didn't work overly well because I can see that some of this has leaked out which is not going to detract from the tastiness of it um, but maybe I must use a little less next time I will not give up on it so this is the garlic cheese butter that I'm going to slop on here because at the moment you can see it's sort of crusty and what this does is it makes it nice and soft again And then we'll let them cool a smidge and then open one up for you to see the inside. So the cold front is moving in or the rain is moving in slowly but surely because the clouds have gone, the wind has increased and as you can see it's got quite a bit darker. So, right, so here we have this delicious snackaroo which I'm going to just try and release a little bit before they stick I'm going to take the smallest one but I'm not worried about all of these little bits that have leaked out here because these this is the mozzarella I can see and these are the crusty bits and these will be delicious so I'm actually gonna release these so that they go with oh, I see some of the hammers escaped as well so I'm gonna deliver this actually in this because it's so bloody messy and because it's a friend it's not a real issue okay so let's cut this open it's still gonna be bloody hot So there's your filling, you can see it's beautifully soft and then what you do is the tomato sauce, you dip this in, let me just open this, like this, watch how I do this, oh my god. These are life-changing, seriously. Nikki, I hope you enjoy them. That's it. Until I find some other wonderful inspiration, um, I will see you whenever. Bye.